Hello and welcome to the episode 138 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Among other things, today we'll focus on some early developments in the Beatles' career, the band's third national UK tour, and the announcement of a special honour bestowed by BBC. On the 18th of May 1960, the Silver Beatles received an offer to back up one of promoter Larry Parnes' acts, Johnny Gentle, for his upcoming 7-gig tour in Scotland. This chance was a direct result of their audition in front of Parnes, detailed in episode 130 of What A Fab Day. They were to earn £18 per person per week, about £420 in 2020 money, with expenses partially paid. The lads accepted and rushed to prepare for their first engagement, only two days away. The band featured George Harrison, John Lennon and Paul McCartney on guitar and voice, Tommy Moore on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass. Unfortunately, the lads forgot or couldn't be asked to inform promoter Brian Kelly that they wouldn't be able to show up for their engagement on the 21st of May, result of another audition detailed in episode 134 of this podcast, which will cause Kelly to blacklist them for a long time. Moving on to 1961, we find the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums, still engaged in their long second residency at the Top 10 Club in Hamburg, West Germany. During the working hours of the 18th of May 1962, George Martin, producer and head of A&R of Parlophone Records, sent an application for artist contract form to the EMI administrative department in preparation for his meeting with the Beatles. That night, the band, still featuring Pete Best, performed their 35th of 48 nights at the Star Club in Hamburg. In 1963, we have the opening night for the third national package tour featuring the Beatles, this time playing second fiddle to American artist Roy Orbison. Other acts in the tour were Jerry and the Pacemakers, David Macbeth, Louise Cordet, Tony Marsh, Terry Young Six, Erkley Grant, and Ian Crawford. This first night, the tour was at the Adelphi Cinema in Slough. Like it had happened for the Montez Row package tour, the Beatles would eventually be promoted to the top of the bill, thanks to audience demand. For the duration of the tour, they performed Some Other Guy, Do You Want to Know a Secret, Love Me Do, From Me to You, Please Please Me, I saw her standing there and twist and shout. In 1965, the Beatles returned at the Twickenham Film Studios, this time to start the post-sync work on their second feature film, Help. In case you don't know, this part of the post-production required the overdubbing of speeches on the various film scenes. During the evening, Paul McCartney and his girlfriend Jane Asher went to the Talk of the Town Club to see Gene Barry performing, meeting him after the performance, and then ending the evening at the downstairs at the Pickwick Club. Moving on to 1966, we have another 12-hour session at the EMI Studios for the Beatles. Between 2.30 pm and 2.30 am, they completed Got to Get You Into My Life, recording a brass section featuring Eddie Thornton Ian Hammer and Les Corden on trumpet and Peter Coe and Alan Branscombe on tenor sax. Each player received £18, about £340 in 2020 money, for their session work. There was no score prepared in advance and the matter was resolved with Paul McCartney sitting at the piano and teaching to each player the part he had in mind for the instrument. After the recording, a reduction mix of take 8 created take 9, erasing the old guitar and vocal tracks in the process. Paul overdubbed a new main vocal track, George Harrison and John Lennon supplied new background voices and guitar overdubs, Ringo Starr added tambourine and George Martin organ. Two monomixes were made at the end of the session. 
On the 18th of May 1967, BBC announced that the Beatles were going to be one of the two British representatives in a live broadcast encompassing several European and international TV networks to celebrate the first live worldwide broadcast. The Beatles had agreed to perform a song composed especially for the event. John and Paul set out to write one song each, following the only brief given to the band by the BBC. Keep it simple, so that everyone around the globe will understand. John's All You Need Is Love would eventually be chosen over Paul's Your Mother Should Know. It was a simple song, catchy, and also served as the perfect embodiment of the summer of love. My call to action, reminding you to please visit www.simonmas.com support to be instrumental in supporting the creation of this and my other music-related content online, concludes this episode of What A Fab Day. Tune in tomorrow for more stories from the four you love. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.